Hello and welcome to a video on parallel lines and a transversal and the angles that are formed when you have that. Okay, so we all know what parallel lines are, but what's a transversal? So first a little definition. Just a transversal is just a line that intersects two other lines. That's it. So in the case of the diagram that you're looking at right here, M crosses lines L and N. So M is a transversal. Okay, now when this happens, as you can see in the diagram, um, when M is a transversal to lines L and M, it forms eight angles. Every single time you're going to form eight angles. Every time you have two lines in a transversal, there's eight angles. Now we can kind of think of these angles as four pairs, two pairs of angles, sorry, two sets of four angles. So we've got the set of four angles on the top, and we've got the set of four angles on the bottom. And if you notice, if these lines are parallel, you've got combinations of angles that are going to be the same. Like, for example, 1 and 5, they're the same measure, if you measure those with the protractor. And then angles 2 and 6 are the same. 3 and 7 are the same. And there's actually a lot of different pairs of angles that you're looking at here. And every single pair is not, they're not all the same, but they're either going to be the same or they're going to be supplementary. So to see that a little bit more clearly, let's talk about two kinds of angles that we already know about. Let's talk about linear pairs and vertical angles. It's just a refresher. What are linear pairs and vertical angles? Well, you don't need parallel lines for those. All you need for linear pairs and vertical angles is just, just two lines. When you have two lines that intersect, the angles that are across from each other are called vertical angles, and we're going to abbreviate that as VA for vertical angles. And those pairs of angles will always be equal. And when you have two angles that form a straight line, since a straight angle is 180 degrees, those two angles will always be supplementary, and that's a linear pair. Okay, we already, we, we've already seen that. But what we're going to see now is other pairs of angles formed by a more complicated diagram that has two parallel lines that are transversal. All right, so the next kinds of, the next pair of angles that we're going to talk about are called corresponding angles. And what I've done is I've shown you the name, corresponding angles, the abbreviation CA. And I've, I've shown you a picture here of two lines that appear to be parallel. I'm using the lines on the lined paper to make sure that they really are parallel. And I'm, I picked one of the four different pairs of corresponding angles. And you can see they're both obtuse and they look like they're both equal. Okay, so if my saying it isn't enough, let's look at the diagram up here and let's look at the same angles that we're looking at there. So I've um, traced this and what I want to show you is a translation of angles 2 and 6. And you can really look at more than just angles 2 and 6, but just let's focus for a moment on angle 2 and angle 6. Now I'm going to slide this down, just a translation, so that angle 2, you can see how angle 2 fits right in there. It's the same measure. As long as the lines are parallel, that's going to work. Now what the corresponding angles are, and, and actually we could do the same thing with 3 and 7. 3 and 7 are like the ones that I highlighted below. So if you look at 3 and 7, and I slide this down the same exact way, notice how the measure of angle 3 just fits perfectly onto angle 7. <clears throat> Here's the four pairs of corresponding angles. The ones that I highlighted down here, that I, I showed you down here, right here, are th from the top four angles, it's the bottom right angle there, right? That's the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. From the four angles down here, it's also the bottom right angle. That's why they're called corresponding angles, because they're the same position for the four pairs of angles. So now let's look up here and talk about the four different pairs of corresponding angles. You've got 3 and 7, like the ones that we were just talking about, those are the bottom left ones, sorry, the bottom right. You've got the bottom left ones, like 4 and 8, and their corresponding angles. Now look at how they both look acute. They're also equal to each other. And you know you can see that here if you want real quick. I'm not going to do this for all of them. Look at 4 and then go down to 8. They're the same also. You've got the top left ones, 1 and 5. Those are also corresponding angles, and they're the same. And then you've got the top right ones, 2 and 6, and they're also corresponding angles, as we just saw, they're the same. So that's corresponding, and there's four pairs. The next type of angles that I want to talk about are called alternate interior angles. Now, alternate interior angles has two words that if you remember how, what they both mean in relation to the diagram, it will help you. All right, now, alternate means alternating on both different sides, the different sides of the transversal. 
An interior means it's on the interior of the, um, of the parallel lines. So the interior angles would be the stuff on the inside here, just the inner angles. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, just the four inside angles. The exterior angles would be the four on the outside, like this one, this one, this one, this one. So coming back up here, let's look at the alternate interior angles. So we've got interior, there's three, four, five, and six. Those are the interior angles. And the ones that are alternate interior angle pairs would be the ones that are in different sides of the transversal like four and six, three and five. Now, if we look at, at these angles, these are not congruent because of a translation. They're congruent because of a rotation. If we rotate around right in the middle, you can see how they land right on top of each other and it's a perfect fit every time, as long as the lines are parallel. So four is equal to six because they're alternate interior angles. Three is equal to five. And in fact, alternate interior angles are an angle pair type that are always equal. Okay, the next type that I want to look at are going to be alternate exterior angles. So let's draw a pair of parallel lines, just using the lines of the lined paper. We'll put a transversal going in a different direction this time, just they're all they're all a little bit different from each other. It doesn't matter. Okay, and these are going to be called alternate. exterior angles, or A, E, A. Now try to think about where that would be on the diagram, and I'm just going to show you. It's going to be exterior and on different sides of the transversal. So here's an example of a pair of alternate exterior angles. And these types of angles are also equal. Alternate exterior angles are always equal as long as the lines that they're intersecting, that the transversal intersects are parallel. All of these angle pairs based on a transversal, in order to be equal, have to be intersect. The transversal has to be intersecting parallel lines. Now let's look at some pairs. There's two pairs of alternate exterior angles up here, and they are also going to be equal by a rotation. So let's look at angle 2 and angle 8. Now I'm going to do the same rotation I did before, but this time we're going to focus on two ending up right inside there, fits perfectly inside where angle eight is. So alternate exterior angles, two and eight, one and seven. They're on the outside, so they're exterior, on the outside of the parallel lines, and they alternate on different sides of the transversal. Okay, next type are going to be on the same side of the transversal, and they're going to be called same side interior angles. You might be able to predict what the last two pairs are. They're called same side interior and same side, same side exterior. So we have same side interior angles, abbreviated SSIA, same side interior angles. Now these angles are not going to be congruent. They're more like the linear pairs. Because every pair of angles in the set of eight, any pair that you look at, they're either equal to each other or they're supplementary. And this is where some people sometimes get confused. These are not equal. These angles are different. These are same side interior angles. And the other pair of same side interior angles would be these two. Here you have one of the larger angles formed by this particular set of uh, two parallel lines in a transversal. And you have one of the smaller angles formed. And same side interior angles are always supplementary when the lines are parallel. Only, again, only if the lines are parallel. And then the last type of angle pair, that last angle pair, they're called same side exterior angles, abbreviated SS. EA, and you can probably guess where they are. I'll use the bottom two lines. Just right at the end of my paper here, but I can still do it. Let's switch it to the other side. And here's a pair of same side exterior angles. They're different angles, so I'm not going to mark them the same. These are the same. Let's pick the left side of the transversal this time, and then this exterior angle 
and this exterior angle. They're different measures and they're always going to be supplementary. As long as, when I say always, I mean always as long as the lines are parallel. Okay? So that's the, um, let's count. Let's see how many types of angle pairs we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of angle pairs. And each pair here are either equal to each other or supplementary. There's no, there's no right angles here. There's no 90s, only equal or supplementary.